Hey everyone, welcome to another session of Sarazzle Dazzle Physics. In today's session, we're talking about mass spring systems, guys, and deriving the formula for the time period of t is equal to 2 pi root m over k, guys. So put down today's title, it's going to be mass spring systems, deriving the formula for t is equal to 2 pi root m over k. Okay, before we get going, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button and maybe turn on the notifications so that you get informed every time I post a new video, guys. Right, so let's get straight into it with the following scenario. Okay, guys, let's look at the following example. Here we have a wall over here, we have another wall on the opposite side, and we attach a spring from two sides, and in the middle there is a mass there, so there's a mass connected by two springs. Right, uh, we know that this mass spring system, if I push it, it will exhibit simple harmonic motion. So we know that this mass spring system will exhibit simple harmonic motion, guys, it will exhibit simple harmonic motion. So that means that for simple harmonic motion, acceleration will be equal to minus omega squared x, everyone. Minus omega squared x. Okay, so for the mass spring system, we know that the displacement will always be from the equilibrium position. So the equilibrium position is that dashed line over there, and that is the displacement. Let's label it as x over here. There will also be a force, which is obviously going to be stopping it and slowing it down. So there'll be a restoring force back over here. This is going to be the force restoring, restoring. Happy with that? And obviously that restoring force is also going to be involved in the acceleration. So the restoring force for this spring is going to be the same force from Hooke's law. So we know from Hooke's law that if we were to plot a graph of force against extension over there, there we go, we know that F is equal to Kx over here. That is going to be our restoring force. So the force due to restoring over here will be equal to Kx. Wonderful. Okay, and the object, guys, will also be accelerating because there will be a resultant force upon this object. So the force, the resultant force upon this object will be also equal to Ma, mass times by the acceleration. They are both going to be the same force. So the resultant force will be equal to the restoring force here. So we can say that the F resultant will be equal to F restoring. Okay. So therefore we can say that MA is equal to KX. Right, from here guys, I'm going to have to put a minus sign in front of the KX over here because it's a restoring force and it's in the opposite direction to the displacement, guys. It's in the opposite direction to the displacement. So now we have the minus kx over here. Now from here, guys, we can then uh, rearrange this formula. We can say that a is equal to minus k over mx over here. But we also know that this object will exhibit simple harmonic motion. So we can put down over here, acceleration is equal to minus omega squared x. Happy of that? So this is true, and also this is true over here. Because you know this is true, you just proved it, and the other one is also true because it's going to exhibit simple harmonic motion over here. Now we can then look at the different bits and compare them. The acceleration is here, so yes, the acceleration is there. The x, the displacement, is here. And look guys, we can look at a value of the omega. So look, we end up with all of this. So we end up with minus omega squared is equal to minus k over m over here. And then from there, we can then get omega is equal to the square root of k over m, guys. The square root of k over m. Don't forget what k is, guys. k is going to be the spring constant. So the spring constant over here. Wonderful stuff. Okay, now, so let's scroll down for a bit more space. Okay, so, as you can see, omega is now equal to root k over m. Proved just above here. Make sure you can do that yourself. Then from here, we're going to say that omega is equal to what? What is omega equal to? So previously, we talked about omega. Omega, if you've forgotten, is the angular velocity. Angular velocity. And it's equal to... Theta over t, the total angle swept divided by the total time taken. Or you could say it's equal to 2 pi for one rotation divided by the time period over here. Or you can also say 2 pi f. 
Okay. Right, we're going to use this one only. I want to use omega is equal to 2 pi over t and put that into our equation over here. So right now we have 2 pi divided by the time period is equal to root k over m. Okay, now I want you to make t the subject of the formula now. Let's try and do it. So let's uh, flip it. Uh, let's go. So 2 pi and let's move the root m over k up. And that will be equal to t. Yes, bringing that one up, bringing that one down, and moving the whole thing across. We, that's how we, what we end up with. And therefore, we can say that t is equal to 2 pi root m over k. Happy days, guys. I like to remember it by saying m l k, Martin Luther King. That's what I used to memorize it with, guys. m l k. Right, so. Um, t is equal to 2 pi root m over k, and that is the formula for the time period for the mass spring system. There we go, guys. It's the time period for the mass spring system here. Wonderful stuff. So we can now look at this equation and we can try, try and use it in a practical. So what about the following practical? Okay, so here we go, guys. Practical investigation to find k in a mass spring system. A practical investigation to find k in the mass spring system. And we'll use the new formula that we found. t is equal to 2 pi root m over k. Yeah, interesting thing about that formula. We know that the time period is dependent upon the mass of the actual object itself. So the mass of this, so the mass of this, and the spring constant k, so the spring constant k. Right, so let's say, for example, you're asked to find out the value of the k in the mass spring system using that formula. How are we going to do it? Well, we can do the following. So look, what are you going to change and what are you going to measure? What can we do? So imagine you had this set up in the classroom. You could change the mass. So let's put the first column. We're going to change the mass over here. And we can measure the time taken for 10 oscillations. So I'm going to put 10t over here. You don't measure 1, you measure 10, guys. You don't measure 1, you measure 10. Obviously, it's really hard to measure just one oscillation here. And you always take your readings from the equilibrium position. So you time for 10 oscillations. So as it goes from there, there, and there, that's one oscillation. Obviously, you time for 10 of them. So 10t over here. And then, guys, let's try and calculate t. So obviously, you take this value and divide by 10 to get the value of t over here. So as you can see, guys, you're going to increase the mass 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I'm just putting that numbers in here. And you're going to measure the time period, guys. You measure the time period. You can see here that m increases, t will also increase. Yeah? Those two bits. You can see that relationship over here. So we know that t will also increase. But now, today's question is this. What graph am I going to plot? to work out the value of k. What graph am I going to plot to work out the value of k? And obviously, guys, this is the graphical method. So this is the graphical method of doing it, yes? So the best way to do it is this. Let's square this entire formula here. So t squared will be equal to 4, because we square the 2, pi squared, yes? And the square of all of this becomes m over k over here. Then guys, I'm going to shift the division by k underneath, so therefore we get t squared is equal to 4 pi squared over k and then m over here. Wonderful. Now, obviously guys, we're going to do our favourite thing, we're going to relate this to the equation of a straight line. We're going to write down y is equal to mx plus c over here. Okay, so let's say I was to plot my graph, so let's give ourselves a graph as usual. There we go, here's our graph. So have a look, here's our graph right now. As you can see on the y-axis over here and the x-axis over there, what are we going to plot? So look, if I plot on my y-axis t squared, yes, relate them both together, and on the x-axis the mass, yes, m stands for mass, we know that the gradient of the line will be equal to, we can see very clearly, 4 pi squared over k. So yes, if I was to plot this over here, so let's just change that right now. We're putting on this axis over there, we're plotting t squared, and we're plotting uh, the mass here, t squared against the mass over here. We will yield a straight line relationship. And yes, the gradient of this line will tell us. So the gradient will be equal to 4 pi squared over k. Wonderful stuff. And therefore, guys, last bit then, writing it over here, 
Therefore, we know that k will be equal to 4 pi squared divided by your gradient which you calculated, guys, the gradient which you calculated. Fantastic stuff. All right, so make sure you're able to do this, guys, because obviously it's a skill to be able to work from t is equal to 2 pi root m over k related to the equation of a straight line and then go from there, plot the graph and look at the gradient from there. Fantastic stuff. And obviously, some of you might say, well, hang on a minute, let's say I don't want to square t. You don't have to square t. You're right, we can do the following. So we know that t is equal to 2 pi root m over k. You're right, I can just open it out and I can say t is equal to 2 pi root m divided by root k in mathematics. That's both the same. And then I could plot this on the y is equal to m x plus c. And from here, we can clearly see that if I plot on my y-axis, uh, t, x-axis, root m, and then obviously there's no c in this case now, and the gradient of this line will be equal to 2 pi divided by root k. So yes, I can plot this graph alternatively as well. So I could plot t against root of the mass. The gradient will be equal to 2 pi divided by the root of k. And therefore, I can then rearrange that and we can then say the root of k is equal to 2 pi divided by your gradient over here. And then it can be getting rid of the root sign. So we can then say k is equal to 4 pi squared over the gradient squared. All right, so before we go, let's have a quick recap from the top today. Okay, so today's title was Mass Spring Systems, Improving the Time Period is Equal to 2 Pi Root M over K. Scrolling down, I then discussed uh, what happens as the displacement takes place. We know that there will be a restoring force equal to minus Kx. The minus comes because it's in the opposite direction, restoring it. We also know that will be equal to the resultant force Ma. Equating both of them, Ma is equal to minus Kx. We know that we can see omega is equal to root k over m, guys. Yes, I just related both of those equations together. Scrolling down, I then said omega is then root m over k, and we then substituted omega is equal to 2 pi over t, where t is the time period. We worked out that t is equal to 2 pi root m over k, guys. We worked out t is equal to 2 pi root m over k. Then scrolling down, we then did the practical. We then said if you were to do this as a practical to work out the value of k, you're going to measure for 10 oscillations and find out the time taken for one, which is the time period. Plotting a graph of t squared against the mass m, the gradient will be equal to 4 pi squared over k. And there we go. Therefore, k will be equal to 4 pi squared divided by the gradient of that graph. Alternatively, guys, you could do the following. t is equal to 2 pi root m over k. And then you can simply plot t against root m, the gradient will be equal to 2 pi divided by root k, 2 pi divided by root k, and therefore k will be equal to 4 pi squared divided by your gradient squared, guys. Wonderful stuff. And that's it for another session of Surrounds of Physics. Make sure you like and subscribe to get my channel going, and good luck with your studies. Bye-bye.